Hi, Social Media Club. This is Jessica Murray, your community manager. And today we are recording some videos and interviews from the IBM Social Lounge at the Austin Convention Center here at South by Southwest. I have some very good friends. For years we've been friends. Um, Andy Dixon to my left and Brett Hensley, Hen Henley sorry, to my right. Yes, we're that good of friends. Um, I know these guys from back in Nashville when I lived there a few years ago and actually started Social Media Club Nashville. Um, and tell me what you guys are doing in South by. Well, we're here to... Uh get people aware about I Am Convicted. And I Am Convicted is a blog post where people come and they talk about their convictions, what they're convicted of. Uh, and, that, and, and that's an interesting uh, word because a lot of people actually have convictions, you know, for different things, you know. Uh, 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 and uh, it's also about... Uh, What's your story, though? My, it's, it's based on your story, which is what? It's based on my story. I did 27 years in prison. Um, it was an illegal sentence. The Supreme Court of Tennessee overturned my uh, case in uh, 2000, and after 27 years, I was released from prison. And while I was there, I went through a healing process. And because one thing I want to make clear is that while I was in prison and I had an illegal sentence, I was not a nice person. Yeah. And I, I, I was raised to be the person that I was, and it took a long time and a lot of uh, inner soul searching to want to come away from that and out of that and to realize why I w was what I was. And then I wanted to be able to kind of reach back to, to the young guy that I was. And, you know, you can't really do that, so the, the best alternative for me was to try to talk to young people today and try to get them to understand that when school teachers or people in their lives that they look up to tell them that their destiny is prison, mm -hmm. that their destiny is failure, I'm, I'm going to stand up and tell them that doesn't have to be your destiny. Because I know when I was growing up, it was already uh, uh, assumed and, and, and written in stone that you're going to grow up, you're going to be a, a badass, and you're going to go to prison. Just because of the way you were raised, because, learned behavior. Well, well, my family. You know, I'm a, a fourth generation of incarceration. Yeah. I got four generations of my family that went to prison, and I'm not alone. I mean, this is an epidemic in the United States of America. We got so many people that have been affected by the criminal justice system that now you have upwards of 60 million people out there that somehow or another are affected by this system. They're either in jail, prison. Uh, work release, probation, parole, they're, in, they're somehow connected into this system. And until we wake up and have some sanity about our criminal justice system, we're always going to have these problems. The good news is we got wonderful people like Senator Webb out of Virginia. Unfortunately, he's going to retire soon, but I'm hoping someone else will pick up the, the, the torch and run with it. But he's been trying for years to just have a blue ribbon panel to just look at our criminal justice system to see if we can fix it. Sure. You know? So I want to know how, Brett, how are you helping share Andy's story right now? Well, I think what we, we started writing a book about 14 months ago, Andy and I, and uh, we quickly realized because of, I mean, from just this conversation alone, you can tell it's, it's a very deep and complex story. And there's a lot, of, a lot of issues in the narrative that we're trying to address that we can't really just do in a book. So it's a book, but we're using IamConvicted.com, specifically the blog, as a way to share his story in an open, sort of transparent fashion. Mm -hmm. And what I mean specifically by that is we actually release full chapters as we write them, our storytelling process, interviews, anything basically that we do to create the story and to foster it and to, to eventually publish this book uh, is fully transparent. You can read the first full chap four chapters on the blog right now. Uh, and we're our plan is right now is to release the entire first manuscript online so that, you know, we can openly share the story as we're building it. Yeah. So. And this does affect, I mean, millions of families, like you said, 60 million people incarcerated. All of those people, you know, not all, but well, most not, have children. 60 million aren't incarcerated. It's just 60 million that are affected by it. Yeah, might have affected. Yeah, might have, somehow or another this affects 60 million people in America. And my point is, is until we're willing to look at our criminal justice system and rewrite some of these laws that we have, we're going to continue to have these problems. And, and no one says it better than Senator, Jim, uh, Senator Webb himself. He said that if you look around the world, America has the largest prison population in the entire world. Now, what that says is one or two things. Either we got the craziest, most whacked out people in the world living in America, 
or we got a problem with our criminal justice system. And he said, I've been all over this country. I've been to every state, and I've visited, and I've talked to people. He said, we we got good people. We don't have crazy people. So we got a justice system that's messed up that needs to be changed. And, and, and we really do. And, and in America, the numbers are getting so high now that they have no choice but to start looking at changing it. Because on one hand, you have uh, private prison corporations who, who want to uh, take over state facilities and run them which is akin to slavery in my opinion. And then you got, uh, on the other hand, people that, that want to slow this machine down that's, that's uh, chewing up generations and destroying families and say, wait a minute, we can do better because we spend more money on prisons than we do education. We have a system now that will look at the children of the incarcerated and say, okay, 70% of these kids are going to wind up in prison, so we're going to take this number and figure out how many beds we need in the future to build prison beds for them. And if that ain't the most whacked out thing you ever heard of in your life, I don't know what is, because if you know that 70% of these kids are going to grow up and go to prison, why in the hell are you not out there uh, fostering and building better education models and putting these kids in school to where you don't have to worry about them going to prison or robbing me or you or, or raping somebody or doing some kind of crazy crime. It, it's it's just insanity. Yeah, Pure rather insanity. than being proactive, they're proactive. just kind of sitting around and waiting. So, waiting Brett, tell for, me... Waiting for what they know is coming. Yeah. So, tell me, you've got the first four chapters of Andy's story. Yeah, I know that it's going to be a really long chapter, a couple, uh, couple books, I bet. Yeah, we're looking at probably 14, 15 chapters. I mean, we, we, we've got it, we, you know, the story structure probably will change. It just kind of depends on a lot of it's how the community reacts and responds to what we're doing, too. You know, a lot of the changes we made to story structure so far has been because of feedback from people that have been reading what we've done so far. And it's not that we still hold creative control, but at the, uh, we really do value other people's feedback, too. People that resonate with the story are willing to share. Uh, as far as, you know... It down the road, you know, the plan is, you know, finish the finish the book and get it done and get it published ourselves, and uh, and that's just you know step one. Okay, you know so you got the first. Is important. It's also a love story. <laughs> I know that love story. Yeah. Um, so you've got the first four chapters done, and you are launching a Kickstarter. Tell me about that. Yeah, we actually launched the Kickstarter uh, Thursday, March eighth at noon. So we're about a day and a half ish in, and. We're moving steadily strong. We've got like 23, 24 backers so far, so we're really good. And this yeah. is to pay for helping publish a book, right? Right. It's helping us finish the, the manuscript, get the uh, the book done, publish it, and uh, and just you know give us some seed funding to, to maybe take that next step. Yeah. So. Yeah, we're thinking feature films, uh, interactive books, uh, you know, all kind of medium. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really exciting, though, also because you do um, some local counseling to mm -hmm. teens, yeah, in trouble or you know, of parents who are incarcerated. Tell us about some of the some of the programs or counseling that you provide for local Nashville teens. Well, what we're doing right now is uh, it, it, we find a kid that's in trouble, that's like really on the edge, and I got this one kid. I'm not going to out him, but. Uh, as a teenager, he was bound over to the adult court system. Uh, he has a twin brother, and uh, the system is prepared to chew him alive, okay? He's a bright kid. Uh, he started his life out in gangs. He joined a gang at nine years old. This is the life that he knows. And the only way this kid is ever going to get on solid ground is if a community of people come together and support him. And so... I took this kid aside one day, and, and we sat down. Uh, first, we hung out together. You know, you don't just sit down and have me. We hung out. I rode around with him. We went and checked out a few things. I, I wanted to take him around and show him something outside his neighborhood. Uh, took him out to our house. He went swimming, you know, and we cooked and barbecued. These are things that he never had, you know. And so after that, I just told him, I said, uh, I want you to know one thing, dude. You're not in this on your own. You know, I'm going to be with you. You may go to prison. I'm going to try every way in the world to talk to judges, lawyers, whoever i got to talk to, make noise to say, give you a chance, you're worth saving. And it may work and it may not work. And if you go to prison, I'll come visit you. You know, I'll help you out there. I know people inside. I'll have, you know, folks, you know, to help you out in there. But my goal is to keep him from going. Yeah. And so far... Uh, we, we've been successful, but see, he, he is like a lot of other people. He's got an, a, a, a public defender who doesn't give a dang about his case, uh, never talks to him. He calls the public defender, and the public defender doesn't call him back. And this is a guy that's going to walk in court with him one day and say, 
Yes, Your Honor, I'm prepared to, to defend this guy. He ain't prepared for anything. He's not trying to defend this guy. He's going through the, through the rope, through the routine. And this kid is getting in this machine that's prepared to eat him alive. Yeah. And at his age, if he goes in, his chances of having a successful life outside of incarceration have just plummeted. And, well, it's also the justice system is so overwhelmed, like you said before. They're ready to eat him alive. Yeah. They're ready to bring him, bring him in and eat him alive. So I've been working with him. He's got, he's got his GED. Uh, he, uh, uh, he, he's, he's really trying hard to get work. You know, he hadn't got a job yet, but it, it ain't from lack of trying. This kid walked five miles to do an interview with UPS, went through a whole day's worth of interviews with them and everything, only to, in the end, be turned down when they found out that he had a court date coming. Mm -hmm. and, and you can't really fault them for that because, uh, you know, if you're going to get somebody, you want somebody that's going to be there, you sure. know. And what's the odds of a, of a young black guy not going to prison on an armed robbery charge? Yeah. So tell me what you guys, this is your first South by Southwest, right? Actually, my second. Okay. The first one I was in 2008, and it was I was with a company at the time, and it was a different experience. So okay, so tell I, me. I'm counting my first. All right, so what are you doing with I Am Convicted and the Kickstarter project here at South by Southwest? You know, we're really doing keeping it simple. For us, it's really just about making genuine connections. For me, specifically, making genuine connections with other storytellers and other change makers, people that want to do social good in the world. And I think Andy's story represents so much more than just prison. You know, it's the power of reinvention, the power of redemption. Those are things that I think even people that haven't been in the system can relate to. So we're really just trying to get connected with other people that, uh, you know, understand and resonate with what we're trying to do and specifically trying to do good in the world. So my goal is just to make as many connections as possible. Obviously, we want to raise awareness for the Kickstarter campaign. I'd be lying if I said otherwise. But, you know, for me, I'm not a person that's going to go throw flyers out into the mid middle of a crowded room or uh, stand out, uh, you know, on a, on a set of stairs with a megaphone in my hand. You know, if you want to come talk to us, we're going to be hanging out. We're going to be running around. You can you can tweet us at I am convicted or at Brett Henley. Um, I'll I'll come find you and we'll have a conversation, some coffee, and we'll talk because that's just how I prefer to do things, anyways. So. Okay. And where if people want to learn more about Andy's story, the I am convicted blog, where do they find that? Yeah, it's just IamConvicted.com, and uh, they can get everything they want. Everything, all the info on the Kickstarter is there uh, on the homepage. You can uh, read the first, like I said, for full four chapters. Uh, you can get information um, on their backstory, a little bit about me, the whole nine yards. Awesome. So. Well, thank you, Andy and Brett, for coming thank in. You. And you can learn more about I Am Convicted at IamConvicted.com. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your South by, okay? Yeah. I'm I'll see you guys around too. tonight, too. You too. Okay, you take All care, right. Jess. Thanks. Thank you.